So as I said in a previous video, I would look at uh, mating this kind of design with a cantenna. Now, I've done a previous video uh, quite a few years ago now where I uh, mated a uh, more traditional Yagi antenna with a uh, cantenna. But this time we're going to go with uh, this design with the circle elements. Now this kind of design has uh, been around for quite some time and uh, you may find if you Google uh, this uh, kind of setup that uh, people have used uh, washers as the uh, elements and a piece of uh, threaded bar like this inserted it into uh, typically it started off with uh, Pringles cans and uh, got quite good results from that I've never ever tried that uh, but I will in the future just to uh, you know see if it does work because um, in that kind of uh, situation what they have is uh, a main driven element which is typically in a cantenna like this or you know a dipole antenna inserted into a uh, Pringles can and basically the parasitic elements are just uh, hanging in uh, free space inside the can itself and they act more as a uh, passive uh, kind of element that uh, helps to uh, focus the uh, you know the radio waves into the uh, main driven element they're not actually connected in any way to the main part of the antenna it's something that uh, i will look at in the future but for this video we're going to see what it takes to uh, take this typical design and mate it with a uh, cantenna so the work that I've done over the past few weeks has mainly been uh, looking at the uh, driven element and the uh, parasitic elements themselves and how I can combine that with a cantenna and as I said in this video I wasn't happy with the uh, driven element being uh, 68 millimeters in diameter that's what this uh, driven element is here so I knew that was a little bit too big and the driven element that we're going to use in the uh, cantenna in this video is 63 millimeters in diameter and if you have 63 you get uh, 31.5 which is typically a wavelength used at 2.4 gigahertz so this uh, particular driven element wasn't resonant at uh, Wi-Fi was quite broadband so uh, you know it did uh, work you know ish well ish in uh, the uh, Wi-Fi spectrum but I knew we could do better so now we've got a driven element that's uh, better suited for Wi-Fi and should work a lot better in, especially when we mate it with this can here now something else that I've changed from this design as well I've done away with this uh, parasitic element here off the top of my head I think this was uh, 56 millimeters in diameter but uh, we don't need this so it's really been simplified we've just got the uh, main driven element here and then I've gone for six parasitic elements here the parasitic elements are 34 millimeters in diameter which is the same as the diameter on this design here so I've simplified it quite a bit and hopefully uh, you know mating it with the cantenna will also uh, produce better results so this is a sketch of the design then that uh, I've come up with and I have gone for six parasitic elements here we've got seven and uh, I've decided to remove one of those so I'm just going for six but you can use seven if you want to and uh, basically I, I'll make a PDF that uh, you can download I'll put a uh, link in the description but we've got our parasitic elements here we've got our main driven element here and the back reflecting element which is uh, on this one here we don't need that anymore because that is going to be on the back of our cantenna and as for the cantenna we're going to go with the uh, stainless steel toilet brush shirt holder that I've used in previous videos this is uh, 200 so let me measure it 226 millimeters long um, I measure it to about here because we have got a lip on that side so it's indented slightly so I take my measurements a few millimeters in there and these are typically uh, 90 millimeters in diameter which is uh, almost perfect for Wi-Fi that's why I use them so the first thing I'm going to do then is cut out all my elements with a pair of scissors and you can see I've already drilled the hole first because it's a lot easier to do that rather than uh, trying to drill a hole through a small element like that and just tidy them up with a uh, little bit of emery paper on the sides so I've got all the uh, elements cut and shaped now and a little tip especially with the smaller ones if you bolt them all together and uh, sand them uh, on the emery paper all together it's much easier to get them nice and round and all equal size 
So now that I've got my uh, elements cut out and cleaned, I'm going to start constructing everything together. I've also drilled a small hole here so I can attach the uh, main driven element of the coax to the uh, main driven element here. And I've drilled that uh, five millimeters in from the outer edge of the circle. Now to put all this together, I was going to uh, purchase some of this uh, nylon threaded rod. I was going to purchase it a little bit thicker than this. This is M6, so I was going to purchase something around uh, M8 uh, or M7, somewhere like that, a little bit thicker than this. But um, what I've decided to do instead is use these nylon spacers that I've got here. Now I've uh, got most of the sizes fine, but uh, the uh, main driven element to the uh, back reflector of the can which is uh, here is uh, 38 millimeters in distance now this is uh, 40 millimeters but I'm just going to uh, shave a little bit off with the Dremel the uh, other one here which is the uh, main driven element to the first parasitic uh, element here I've got a 20 millimeter spacer but uh, what I'm going to do is make that up with uh, some of these uh, nylon washers and then for the rest of them which are spaced out at 30 millimeters each all the parasitic elements I've got these nylon spacers here which are exactly 30 millimeters in length and I'm going to tie all these together with the, this M6 threaded nylon uh, bar here which uh, you know doesn't have enough strength on its own to uh, hold all those elements inside the can but with these spaces uh, in between there'll be uh, more than enough strength to hold everything together so that's the main driven element in place and I've got those uh, washers as I said to make up the uh, length of uh, this one but I'm just using this uh, threaded rod what I do is put a few turns screw a few turns in to this spacer here and then uh, cut it off and then place the first parasitic element in line and then screw in the next spacer and you just keep working yourself down until you've got all the elements in place so we're now ready to start putting uh, everything together and uh, I've prepared the can I've uh, put this uh, on here so we can attach a tripod to this um, I'll put a link in the description to my Cantena video so you can see how you do this in more detail I'm not going to repeat it here but uh, I've also drilled a hole in the center of the can here this is going to be our back reflector that's why we haven't got a reflector on the uh, elements here and uh, that's dead center and I've also drilled a hole to feed the uh, coax through for when we solder that onto our main driven element it's going to come out here to an SMA connector and then we can connect a Wi-Fi card to it so I've got a hole drilled there ready to uh, attach the coax so that's what I'm going to do first I'm going to attach the coax I've got a length of coax here a little bit longer than what I uh, actually need but I'm going to be feeding that down through the can and then through the hole and then I'll trim off any excess that I don't want so this is probably uh, the trickiest part of uh, the construction I've uh, got my coax here and I've uh, removed quite a a lengthy piece of the uh, outer braid just slightly longer than uh, the distance here to the uh, back of the can itself and I've soldered the outer braid here I pre tinned it so I can solder it in to the back of the can and I've connected this to the main driven element and now I'm going to carefully thread everything through the back of the cantenna and then cut away any excess coax that I don't want so I've got the coax soldered onto the back of the can there and I've used quite a bit because I don't want this uh, accidentally snapping off I mean there will be a little bit of strain around that area so I make sure that I use plenty of it I'm going to trim away this uh, excess uh, threaded rod here uh, before I uh, finish it off but I'm just leaving that in place for now now if you take a look down in the can the uh, element itself is wobbling around quite a bit and uh, it's not quite centered now I was going to make well I still am going to make an end cap for this out of cork like I do with my cantennas and I was going to drill a hole through the center of that and then bring out some more of the threaded bar through that and then uh, lock it down with a nut on the end but what I've decided to do instead is make a uh, giant washer out of some thin plastic and I'm going to uh, just fasten that down there with a nut and uh, leave that in place it'll also help stabilize it and keep it centered as well 
And as for the material to make this, you could use some, uh, you know, just any old thin plastic that you can get your hands on. I used uh, some of the plastic from the box that the uh, toilet brush came in. So you can see the large plastic washer that I made out of the uh, plastic packaging is doing a good job of keeping the element stable and centered inside the can. You can't move it around now if you shake it. And uh, I've gone ahead and tidied up the uh, coax as well. I've got just over 200 millimeters of coax length there and I've put a uh, SMA connector on the end of there. And as for the end of the antenna, I'm going to use uh, some cork matting. I uh, use this on my antennas, it works out really well. And uh, I'm going to epoxy that to the end there. And when it sets, I'll uh, cut away all the uh, excess and then shape it around with a sanding block using the uh, can as a guide so you can get it quite round doing it that way. So the antenna is uh, basically finished. I've got the uh, cork end cap in place and it's uh, sanded off. It really is easy to work with cork and it's uh, the perfect material for an end cap on an antenna like this. But uh, normally I would uh, paint uh, the antenna uh, black but because this isn't a antenna I want some way of differentiating it from the rest of my antenna. So what I'm going to do is just paint the uh, end cap and the uh, back reflector black and I'm going to leave all this stainless steel. So let's give this a test using the same access point as we did in the previous video but let's just bring up the uh, test screen from the previous video just to remind us of uh, how uh, powerful it was you know what kind of uh, signal strength we got from that and as you can see in the uh, screen here we're getting around 83-84% uh, of signal strength so not too bad but uh, as I said in the previous video uh, not groundbreaking either so let's give this a quick scan then and hopefully we've improved it somewhat so now that the signal has uh, settled down a little bit we do seem to be getting into the 90% uh, there around 94% signal strength it uh, has dropped down a little bit uh, and then recovered it does kind of peak up to around 98% but uh, it seems to settle and it's pretty stable around the 94% mark so we have increased this signal by about 10 dB so that's not too bad but uh, you know if you're watching this video and uh, maybe haven't compared it to some of my other antenna designs you know that uh, it could be better than this but I think this is a nice uh, starting point and we can definitely improve this in the future this is uh, you know something I will look at again and again and uh, go back to because I have got some ideas with this how we could possibly squeeze even more power out of this particular design but uh, as I said including it into a can like this we've certainly improved that uh, signal strength and you may say but Andrew that's uh, you know 94-95% that's uh, pretty damn good and uh, yes I'd agree it is pretty damn good but uh, I've got my uh, cantenna here um, on the uh, setup just to compare with the same access point and as I said in the previous video to this uh, the uh, access point is too close to do a comparison with the cantenna because the cantenna will just max out at 100% I need to take it outside and do a much longer range test to uh, compare that against and uh, you know if I can't beat the cantenna with, you know which is a much more complex design uh, is the uh, Yagi uh, can that uh, we've just built compared to a cantenna. A cantenna is a pretty simple design when you uh, break it down and look at it but uh, I've spent the best part of uh, probably five years uh, not working every day of course but uh, improving the uh, overall design of the cantenna to get it as uh, perfect as I can and you can see that uh, you know the cantenna uh, completely outperforms this design and this design is a lot more complex and harder to build than the cantenna so you have to weigh up the pros and cons of something like that and uh, you know is it worth uh, the time and effort to build something like that when a simple cantenna can outperform it but as I said more work to do and more experimentation so to conclude the video I think uh, you know as a uh, improvement over this design adding it to the can to uh, get a little bit more performance out of it I think that is a win we uh, certainly have done that uh, we're getting around 10 dB uh, more with this design than uh, this design on its own but uh, you know I do think uh, there's some more things I can do to this to get a little bit more 
uh, distance out of this a little bit more power I've got a few ideas uh, to try out uh, you know with the spacings of the elements and the general shapes and everything else but uh, I'll put the PDF uh, in the description if you want to download it to produce this one uh, and play around with it but uh, just uh, bear in the back of your mind that uh, I will make changes in the future because at the end of the day it uh, is a little bit more of a complex design I mean you have to take time cutting out the uh, elements themselves and being as precise as you can uh, with a pair of scissors and a file cutting the uh, copper and uh, you know the the time and effort to put into building this if it doesn't perform uh, any better than the uh, normal cantenna which is a, a really simple design when uh, you break it down and look at it then uh, you have to ask yourself is it worth building this and that's what you have to ask yourself with uh, antennas like this I mean not all are ground baking performance but uh, some have uh, benefits over others uh, when it comes to uh, linear and horizontal or circular polarization uh, whether they work better at medium range or long range so you know it's not just down to uh, performance over distance some of the time and I have got a few ideas to uh, you know uh, evolve this if you will to try and get some more power out of it I've been playing around with this kind of element here instead of the uh, flat circle one this one uh, is showing promise so I will put a little bit more time into this but uh, you know it'll be over a period of time don't expect a video uh, in a week or so's time I'll uh, probably take a look at this in a uh, couple of months again uh, just jotting some ideas down over those uh, couple of months because I've been on some uh, Yagi forums and uh, discussing this uh, with a few uh, people that uh, you know are on those forums some forums that I go on regularly and uh, I've got a few more ideas from those discussions that I can do to try and get a little bit more power out of this so, so it will be a long form video where we look at uh, you know experimenting with this we'll take it over to the spectrum analyzer and look at different configurations and how that uh, changes over time so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, any comments or questions or any ideas you've got now that uh, you know we could probably improve this overall design get a little bit more power out of it then please uh, drop them below and uh, if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up and hopefully You'll join me on the next one.